to our Easter message on the greatest story ever told, focusing on why Easter really matters. Let's open in prayer. Dear God, show us why Easter really matters. In Jesus' name, amen. Most of us know some of the stories in the Bible. Jonah and the whale, Adam and Eve, Noah's ark, Jesus walking on water, and Jesus dying on a cross and then coming back from the dead on Easter, but not very many of us know the whole story of the Bible. And that's tragic. Because on their own, those stories can be powerful and life-changing. But when you understand the whole story, the backstory and the history of the Bible, it gives them a whole new level of meaning and significance. When you know the whole story, the rest of the story has more meaning. When you know the whole story, the rest of the story has more meaning. Let's jump into the greatest story ever told. We're going to start right at the beginning, Genesis 1. In this first chapter of the Bible, we learn that God is the creator of everything. He created the heavens and the earth. He created everything as an act of love and his creation was good. God created us, human beings, as the final act of creation in his image. That means from the beginning, we were created with dignity and value. Not only that, but God created us with a purpose. Check this out. Genesis 1 verses 28 says, Then God blessed them and said, Be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and govern it. Reign over the fish in the sea, the birds in the sky, and all the animals that scurry along the ground. And then verse 31 says, Then God looked over all he had made, and he saw that it was very good. And evening passed, and morning came, marking the sixth day. What God was doing here was saying, Hey, you're not like everyone else. You're special. You have been created in my image, and as a result, you have a special job to play. Your job is to rule over my creation on my behalf. I founded the company and now I want you to be the CEO. I believe in you. But we know it doesn't always go that way. Sometimes, instead of doing what's good for others, we just do what we think is good for us. We ignore a friend when they need us. We neglect our parents' advice and end up causing more trouble than if we had listened. We choose to rebel against what we know is right and instead do what is wrong. This has been the case since the beginning. Genesis 3 says, The serpent was the shrewdest of all the wild animals the Lord God had made. One day he asked a woman, Did God really say you must not eat the fruit from any of the trees in the garden? Of course we may eat fruit from the trees in the garden, the woman replied. It's only the fruit from the tree in the middle of the garden that we're not allowed to eat. God said, you must not eat it or even touch it. If you do, you'll die. You won't die, the serpent replied to the woman. God knows that your eyes will be opened as soon as you eat it and you'll be like God, knowing both good and evil. The woman was convinced. She saw that the tree was beautiful and its fruit looked delicious and she wanted the wisdom it would give her. So she took some of the fruit and ate it. Then she gave some to her husband who was with her and he, he ate it too. Everything was good. We were living in harmony with God, each other and creation. But then we rebelled against God and the future he had planned for us. And the heartbreaking reality is that this rebellion wasn't just something that happened way back when, this is something we do almost every day. We rebel against God and we throw away our future. So let's break this down step by step so that we too can learn how to throw away our future. Number one is found in Genesis 3 verse 1 when the serpent says, did God really say you must not eat the fruit of any of these trees in the garden? He gets Eve to focus on what she can't do if she follows God. It might sound like some of our friends. You must be judgmental since you think I shouldn't do this. You can't come out with us because you aren't allowed to. You can't take this, smoke this, drink this. Here's the key. 
it's not that we can't do those things, it's that we don't need to. We don't have to go looking for approval, validation or meaning from any of those things. We've discovered something so much better. We can say no to all of those things because we have experienced purpose. Step one to throwing away your future is to focus on what you can't do. Number two is found in verses four and five. When the serpent says, you won't die, the serpent replied to the woman, God knows that your eyes will be opened as soon as you eat it, and you will be like God, knowing both good and evil. What the serpent told Eve wasn't 100% false, but it also wasn't 100% true. They didn't take a bite of the apple and immediately have their heart stop beating, but they did immediately fracture their relationship with God. God is the source of all life. So when we turn from God, we are turning away from life and turning toward death. Unfortunately, though, we so often believe in these lies that parts of it seem true. For example, you prayed for something, but there seems to be no answer. The lie is that God must not be listening. Or you were faithful and showed up for your friend, but they keep choosing to go down the wrong path. The lie is that you can't make a difference. Or you show up to church and try your best, but you still mess up. The lie is that you're just a bad person, so there's no point trying to be good. Step two to throwing away your future is to believe in a lie. Number three is found in verse six, which says, the woman was convinced. She saw that the tree was beautiful and its fruit looked delicious and she wanted the wisdom it would give her. So she took some of the fruit and ate it. Then she gave some to her husband who was with her and he ate it too. Eve focused on what she couldn't do. She believed a lie that God didn't have her best interests in mind. Then she gave in and did the opposite of what God was calling her to do. Now, before you just think how stupid this sounds, we do this all the time. We think we can't take this, drink this, go out with this person. So we get down and we believe that God isn't listening. We believe he isn't there. We believe we aren't good enough to live the life he has called us to. So the final step is easy. Step three is we give in. You're probably thinking, I thought this was the greatest story ever told. <laughs> this sucks. Well, the good news is, comes nine verses later in Genesis 3, verses 14 and 15, which says, So the Lord God said to the serpent, I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers. He will crush your head and you will strike his heel. This was the first prophecy about Jesus. Jesus was the offspring of Eve, who would eventually crush the head of the serpent. Nine verses after humanity rebelled against God, we discover God's plan to put back together everything that was broken, starting with us, starting with you. How? Jesus. Jesus will crush our rebellion, but it will crush him to do it. Jesus crushed sin and death on the cross, but it cost him his life to do it. Jesus died on the cross so that we could have life with God. Why does Easter matter? Because even when we rebel, God still chooses grace. Easter is the celebration of God dealing with our rebellion so that we could have a relationship with him. There was a time when I rebelled against God during what I call my dark and twisties. Yes, I was battling mental health issues, but I still made a whole bunch of wrong choices. If you knew me then and know me now, you'll see the grace of Jesus has transformed me. My past has lots of pain, but I can celebrate the joy of how God has changed me. I threw away my future. I focused on what I couldn't do. I believed in a lie, and I gave in to temptation. I rebelled against God. But the good news is that even when we rebel, God still chooses grace. And that's exactly the case for some of you today. You're living in the pain of your rebellion and you don't know what to do. You feel like you've messed up so much that there's no way things can get better. Guess what? You don't have to do anything. Jesus already did. 
and he's inviting you to accept it. Why does Easter matter? Because even when we rebel, God still chooses grace. Let's pray to finish. Dear God, thank you that even when we rebel, you choose grace. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs>